Hey, E36 fanatics. Are you tired of your steering wheel making annoying, loud, kind of screechy noises whenever you're turning, especially in the cold weather, especially when it's cold outside? Well, I am too, and that's why I'm messing with my baby brother's BMW 323i. This is a 1998. So your problem is a clock spring. Probably a clock spring, which is this flat right here. They basically go bad eventually internally. The bands inside stretch out and go bad. And that's what causes this uh, rickety type noise on the inside of your steering wheel. It's really annoying. I tried to go to the junkyard first, couldn't get one. So now I just bought one off eBay. It was like 90 bucks. Luckily this job's pretty easy to do. Should take you about 40 minutes. Basically, you need to remove the airbag, remove the steering wheel. The clock spring is on the other side of the steering wheel. And it's got three screws holding it on. You'll see that here in a minute. By the way, if this video helps you or gives you some new information on a repair, please like this video so I can keep making more of these. Okay, there is something you need to be aware of before you start messing around with this clock spring. Because you don't want to screw this up because it'll delay your it'll delay your replacement. So I actually had this issue first. I tried to pull a clock spring off of a parts car I was doing. It was a 96. This vehicle's a 98. Turns out they put two different clock springs on these vehicles. If you have like a 98, 99, 36, it is not going to be the same as an earlier model clock spring. So just be aware of that you have a lot more wires on your clock spring than the earlier ones do, and it does make a difference. So just be aware that they changed clock springs, I believe in 98, and put these ones with more wires on it than the earlier style clock springs. So let's get into it. I got a T27 Torx bit. And of course, before you start messing around with anything dealing with your steering wheel, airbag, ETC, you're going to want to make sure the battery is off. So I don't really need to adjust my steering wheel for this because I'm using a very small uh, T27. And you've got a hole here and then you got a hole on the other side to remove these bolts. All right, so that was easy enough. Got those two bolts undone. You can see them now on the back side of the steering wheel. And now you have two cables. You got this one, this one that attaches to the airbag, and then you got one lower one down here that attaches to the middle of it. Both of these need to be removed because these are actually coming off of the clock spring, which is on the other side of the steering wheel. And then you also have one more wire right here that's actually part of the clock spring as well. That is a T10 Torx bit. You need to remove that. So remove these two wires, pull off this plastic piece. This plastic piece, it's just, you just pull it right out. Um, just be careful with it because, you know, obviously it is plastic. You don't want to damage this thing. So pull that out and then we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, so here we are at the next step, which is removing this main bolt. This is the only bolt that actually hold, holds your steering wheel to the shaft behind it. So I'm gonna be using a breaker bar because these do tend to be pretty torqued down and a 5 8 socket, or you can use, I think it's a 16 millimeter. And the first thing you do is you make sure the steering wheel's locked and then you go ahead and loosen up the bolt. And that's the way I do these. Some other people have an actual tool that locks the steering wheel, but that's all I do and it's always worked for me. So do that and then the steering wheel will come right off. Okay, so I forgot to record actually removing the clock spring, but it's really simple. You know, you already saw me disconnect the wires and then after that, you have three screws here, here, and here. You just remove those and this clock spring comes right out and that's all you got to do. So to reinstall it, you need to take off this white cover, which is on the front of the steering wheel. It literally just pops right out. Just be careful with it because it is plastic. 
So we're gonna set that aside for a minute. Honestly, I should probably replace this steering wheel too because it's disgusting. My father has a bad habit of leaving this convertible top outside, so it's developed a bad habit of getting molds on the leather, so probably should be replaced, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. Okay, so I got these three screws back on. They are a T10, and don't go too crazy with these things because you are screwing into plastic. I just hand tightened it with my T10, um, my T T10 socket right here. So I got these three in. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna flip the steering wheel. And now I'm gonna pop this back in. And here we've got the plastic piece back in. They just go in the two tabs here and right here. Got that back together. Now we are ready to put the steering wheel on. Hopefully you marked it like I told you to. See, there's my mark right there. And then I also have a mark. It's kind of hard to see here. Now you can see it right there. That just tells me how to align the steering wheel when I put it back on. Okay, so wow, that steering wheel ended up being a little bit more of a pain to get back onto the shaft than I thought it would be. So I started off with using some penetrating oil on the threads, basically and it still wasn't going in and then i realized how you actually do it basically there's actually a plastic tab you can't see it but because I, I didn't even record while well, my recording messed up but there's a plastic tab back there and um you have to actually once really all you do is once the steering wheel is initially pressed on like you know you check where your lines are on the shaft and everything and if it lines back up you press it in initially and then you turn the steering wheel a few times as you're pressing it in and it'll press right through because it'll basically the the tab adjusts if you turn it and press in so that's what i did and it's in now finally all right got the big old bolt back on now we just got these two wires to put on the airbag and then we have these two bolts right here which are the t27s to put on the airbag and then our job is complete all right so got the sucker back on everything's back together and now it's locked so unfortunately this car's been sitting for so dang long now i gotta go charge up the battery and um start up and start up the car in a few hours to even see if it's working out right but i hope y'all enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe my next video i'm going to be doing is tips and general information on buying used bmws so you don't want to miss that hope y'all have a good one